So since the review is so lengthy, we're not going to have time to go through all the problems today. So it's up to you guys to ask questions about which ones you want to see. So I'm going to just take it page by page. So we'll go by each section one at a time. So we'll start with 6.5. Any questions about 6.5? All right, let's look at 24. So for 24, are we going to expand or condense it? Twenty-four. We need to expand it because it's just one term right now, so we can't condense it to anything smaller. We need to expand it. So if we are dividing, what do we have to do to expand that? Subtract. subtract. So this would be the ln of everything on top, so 3y minus everything on the bottom, the ln of x to the fifth power. What else are we doing here? Well, we still need to break this up because we're multiplying in here. So if we're multiplying, how do we expand it more? Add. Add them. So ln of 3 plus ln of y minus, can we do anything with this last term, x to the fifth power? What do we do with exponents? Move it to the front. Move it to the front. So this would be 5 ln x. So every time you break something apart, it gets an ln. Let's take a look at 27 also. So here we want to condense it. So what should we do first to condense this? Awesome. Move the numbers out front to the exponents. This is x squared and 2 to the fifth power. So this is ln. Well, how, what else can we do after we do that? What can we do next to condense it? Because you're adding, you multiply. Awesome. So since we're adding, we multiply. So we have ln of 2 to the fifth power times x squared. divided by 8. So when we condense and bring it together, we get rid of the ln. So our goal at the end is just to have 1 ln. We can simplify this a little bit more. What's 2 to the 5th power? Thirty-two. 32. And can we simplify 32 over 8? So this would be ln of 4x squared. All right, any other questions from this page? Let's look at 26. What should we do first to condense it? Move the 2 to the exponent. And then since it's subtraction, what can we do? Divide. Divide. So we have log of 2. What goes on top? 12. 12. And what goes on the bottom? Two. X squared. Yeah. All right, number 2. So we want to make 18 look like 3 or 6 or both of them. So how can we use 3 and 6 to give us 18? Log 5 of 6 times 3. Perfect, that's 18. How can we expand this into two different logs? Add them. So log 5, log base 5 of 6 plus log base 5 of 3. And then what should we do? Yep, just plug in these numbers. So log base 5 of 6 is 1.113. And log base 5 of 3 is... 0 0.683, so we just plug those in and add them. 1.796, awesome. So let's look at 6.6. .6. Any questions from 6.6? .6? Let's look at number 15. 
So we want to condense these two logs to just be one log. So how can we condense it? Before we can cancel out the three, it just has to be one log. So we want to, since we're adding, we want to condense it to one. So what should we do? Multiply. So we have log base 3 of 3x times 2x plus 1. So we're just condensing it to one log by multiplying them. And now we can get rid of that 3. So what should we do? Or the log base 3. So we make the big base 3, and it cancels. So we're left with 3x times x times 2x plus 1 is equal to 3 to the second power. What's 3 to the second power? 9. Nine. What can we do next to solve? When you distribute, you get 6x squared plus 3x minus 9. 6x squared plus 3x minus 9 is equal to 0. So now we're going to have to factor this. We start with a number that's not 1. So the first thing you want to think is, can I take out any greatest common factors? Do we have any numbers in common between 6, 3, and 9? No. Well, we can do that also. So we can multiply the first and the last. You can, it would make it easier to divide everything out by 3. Divide a 3 out from everything. But we can also just jump right into this as well. Because even if we divide everything by 3, we're still stuck with a number out front that's not 1. So what is 6 times negative 9? Negative 54. Negative 54. And what are two factors of negative 54 that adds positive 3? 9 and negative 6. 9 and negative 6. Perfect. So in our parentheses here, we have x plus 9 and x minus 6. What's the one thing we can't forget to do when we start with a number that's not 1? Divide both of these numbers by that number. Can we simplify 9 over 6? No. Can't simplify it at all? Well, divide, by three. divide top and bottom by 3. So then what are we left with? 3 over 2. What do we do with that 2 on the bottom? Move it to the front. So this becomes 2x plus 3. Can we simplify negative 6 over 6? One. 1. What do we do from here? 3. Not yet. we got to find what x equals first. Equal them both to 0. So 2x plus 3 is equal to 0, x minus 1 is equal to 0. And then we have to solve. So the first one, subtract 3 on both sides, we get 2x is equal to negative 3, divide by 2, so x is equal to negative 3 over 2. And the second one, just add 1 to both sides, so x is equal to 1. So these are our two answers. But now we need to check for extraneous solutions. So we want to take both of our answers, plug it into the original, and see what we get. So we're plugging it into here and here. If one of these ends up as a negative number, it doesn't work. So let's plug in negative 3 over 2. What's negative 3 over 2 times 3? Negative 9 over 2. Is it a negative number? So does it work? No. Nope, doesn't work. Because we get a negative number, it does not work. And now we can plug in 1. 3 times 1 is positive, so we're good there. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, which is positive, so 1 works. So our only answer here is x is equal to 1. All right, so what should we do first for this one? Seventeen. What should we do first? Condense it, so we multiply. So we have log base six 
of 2x squared times 3. How can we get rid of that log base 6? Make the big base 6. So that cancels. What's 2x squared times 3? 6x squared. And what's 6 squared? 36. Now how can we solve for x? Divide both sides by 6. So x squared is equal to 6. What should we do next? Square root both sides. What's the one thing we can't forget when we take the square root of both sides? Plus or minus. So x is equal to plus or minus 6. We have to check for extraneous solutions. So we're going to plug in x is equal to the square root of 6 and x is equal to the negative square root of 6. So we're plugging this in for x. Our only x is here. So we've got to plug it in, see if it gives us a positive number. So if we plug the square root of 6 in, do we get a positive number here? If we plug in positive square root 6. Yes. Yep, we get a positive. So that's one of our answers. What about negative square root 6? If we plug that in, do we get a positive number? Yes. Yep, because it's squared. So negative, six, negative square root of 6 squared would make this a positive. So this works also. So both of these work. All right, one that I wanted to look at is number six. There was a question like this on the quiz that was probably a frequently incorrect response here. So what should we do for number six? Awesome, we wanna change the 16 to look like one over four. So what can we do to 16 to make it a 1 over 4? Um, so the 16 is 1 over 4 to the power of negative 2. Perfect. This still gives us a value of 16, so we're not changing the value of the equation here. We're not changing any numbers. We're just changing the way that the number looks. So it's still 16. So that was a, a common mistake. A lot of people just made like 16 squared, or like they would square this, but that changes the value. That turns this into 16, which it's 1 fourth. So just be careful with that. So we're changing 16 to be 1 fourth to the power of negative 2. What do we do with that exponent of negative 2 now? So we multiply it to the 3x minus 2. So this is negative 6x minus 2. And that's equal to what? Oops, minus 4, plus 4. It's equal to the exponent up here, 5 minus x. Now we just solve for x. So what should we do? Add x and subtract 4. So this gives us negative 5x is equal to 1. Divide by negative 5 on both sides. x is equal to negative 1 fifth. Perfect. All right. So here it tells us that x and y vary inversely. So we use our inverse variation equation. So what's our inverse variation equation? One equals a over x. Y equals a over x. So we want to plug in y and plug in x. So we have 2 thirds is equal to a over negative 12. What can we do to solve for a? Multiply negative 12 on both sides. So that would be negative 24 over 3, which is what? 
negative 8. So negative 8 is equal to a. So our equation relating x and y, all we do is take negative 8 and plug it in for a. So we have y is equal to negative 8 over x. So that's step 1 is our equation. Next, it asks us to plug in negative 3. So we just plug that in for x. So we have y is equal to negative 8 over negative 3. How can we simplify negative 8 over negative 3? Eight over three. Number three. Three is a good one. So to check for direct, inverse, or neither, we have to set y equals. So how can we get this equation to be y equals? Anyone? Multiply y on both sides. We're going to get that y out of the denominator. So we have 15y is equal to x. Can you divide 15 on both sides? Divide 15 on both sides. So y is equal to x over 15. What type of variation do you think this is, if it is any? Inverse. Direct variation. Because it would be inverse if we had y is equal to a over x, if x was in the denominator. But it's in the top. So technically, we're multiplying x by 1 over 15. This is our a, and we are multiplying it by x. So that's what makes this direct. So don't be confused because it's a fraction. Just because it's a fraction doesn't automatically make it inverse variation. It has to be on the bottom to be inverse. Okay, let's take a look at the word problem. The current y in a cer certain circuit varies inversely, so it varies inversely, that tells us what equation we're going to use, with the resistance x in the circuit. If the current is 8 amperes when the resistance is 20 ohms, what will the current be when the resistance increases to 25 ohms? So the current is y, so that means 8 is our y, and the resistance is x, so 20 is our x. So we use our inverse variation equation, which is what? y is equal to a over x. We're going to plug in the y and the x that it gives us to find what a is. So we said y was 8, a, and x is 20. How do we solve for a? Multiply by 20. Multiply by 20. So what's 8 times 20? 160. 160 is equal to a. So our equation is y is equal to 160 over x. So it asks, what will the current be when the resistance increases to 25 ohms? Is 25 our x or our y? Okay. Our x. So we're just replacing 25 x with 25. So y is equal to 160 divided by 25. What does that give us? 6.4. So y is equal to 6.4 amps. Any questions from 7.3? It was up top. Yep. Number 11. Okay, so we're multiplying. So does this x squared minus 8x plus 15 go on the top of the fraction or the bottom? No. Top. We just multiply straight across and straight across. We want to factor first. So what can we factor this top left? x squared plus 3x minus 28. What are two factors of negative 7 plus 7 and negative 4? So x plus 7 and x minus 4. All right, let's factor the bottom left here. So x squared minus 25. 
difference of squares. So how do we factor this? X minus 5, X plus 5. And then the top right, what are two factors of 15 that add to negative 8? Negative 5 and negative 3. And negative three. Perfect. So X minus 5, X minus 3. Do we have anything on the top that cancels out with anything on the bottom? X minus 5 and X minus 5. Anything else? No. Nope. So on the top, we are left with what? X plus 7, X minus 4, and X minus 3. X plus 7 times X minus 4 times X, what was this, minus 3? Yep. And then what are you left with on the bottom? X plus 5. X plus 5. What did we cancel out? X minus 5. So we always have to state our domain. We set whatever we canceled out not equal to 0. So what can X not be equal to? 5. five. So this would be our answer. Uploaded. The answer for 16 was wrong, but I'll fix it after this class and re-upload the new answers. And then which one was the other one? Number 16 and six? 16 and 6. Yeah. Number 1? Yeah. All right. So how can we factor our denominator here? Do we have anything in common? between 3x cubed and 7x? Yeah. The x? Yeah. So what are we left with when we divide both of these by x? 3x squared plus 7. 3x squared plus 7. So on the top now we have 4x cubed, and on the bottom we have x times 3x squared plus 7. Anything cancel? The x's. We have three x's on the top, so this is like saying x times x times x. One of them cancels out with one of the x's on the bottom. So what are we left with on the top? We took away one x, so four x. How many do we have now? The top. Square. Yep. And then on the bottom, we have three x squared plus seven. Just be careful. A common mistake, which I see this a lot in pre-calc, People think that I have x squared and x squared, I can just cancel this out. You cannot do that. You could only do that if you're multiplying, but these are together. You have 3x squared plus 7 on the bottom, so unless you have a 3x squared plus 7 on the top, you can't cancel it out. So you can't just cancel out these x squareds. Not allowed to do that. Third, what's our domain here? What do we cancel out? So x cannot equal 0. Because we canceled out x, so setting that x not equal to 0, just x cannot equal 0. So that is our answer. All right, so the formula for difference of cubes, which I would suggest having this on your notes for tomorrow. If you have a cubed, there's a different one for the sum of cubes and the difference of cubes, which I'll write both of them. So if we're adding them, so if you have a cubed plus b cubed, that would be a plus b times a squared minus a times b plus b squared. If you're subtracting them, so if we had a cubed minus b cubed, that would be a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So Good thing to have on your notes with you for tomorrow are these two equations. Same thing, just different signs. So the signs in the first one go plus, minus, plus. The second one is minus, plus, plus. So Casey says, a good way to remember this is 
if you're adding, the first one is always the same. So this is the same sign. Actually, it works for both. So whether you're adding or subtracting, it's always the same sign. The second one is always the opposite sign. And then the last one is always positive. So you can remember it as soap. I've never heard of that one before. Thanks, Casey.